Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Immigration Friday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello and welcome, good morning. Good morning and welcome to Immigration Fridays with Rumbi. Great to see you. Thank you. Please share this video. Please like. Oops, sorry. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Something happened to my camera. I don't think any people are going to be happy with me. Good morning and welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning. Welcome to Immigration Fridays. Good morning. I hope you can hear me. Please just put a thumbs up or a like just to say my volume is good and you can hear what I am saying. Thank you for joining and good morning. Those of you who are in England, how are you finding the heat wave? How are you finding the heat? The heat here is just another kind of heat. It's a, it's a different level of heat. It's... Um, it's really hot and I stay always with a fan. It's, it's really hot, but I enjoy the hot weather. I think it's nice for us to enjoy it. The sun is good and the vitamin D is good. So good morning and welcome. I'm going to start with um, our question for today. But before I do that, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about uh, Tulia. I represent Tulia. Uh, on Immigration Fridays and we are a community interest company that provides um, immigration advice and support for migrants. So we, who are living in the UK, who are in Africa and Europe. So we, we work in partnership with other organizations to increase the access to advice and support for those who are most in need. So we offer two types of services. We offer free legal advice for those people who need it. And we offer paid for services for those who can pay. Um, and our advice is low cost and free for those people who, who are not working, who are destitute, victims of domestic violence, people who are homeless. So we're able to help those most at need and we're able to, to help those who can pay at a lower cost. We also offer training for organizations. We offer counseling, emergency accommodation. Uh, we sometimes do well-being and sports. Uh, and we have a community legal education program where we empower young people, uh, law students, to... Um, to, to, to support them and give them access into law, especially um, black and ethnic minority um, young men and women as well. Um, so we, we train them, we help them, give them work experience, give them opportunities to get into law, to get valuable work experience, which will help them in their careers. So we, are, we have an amazing team and we are all, um, our, our team is 100% uh, ethnic minorities. Um, we are women-led and we are um, an amazing organization to work for. Uh, so one of the things we do is Immigration Fridays where we give advice and support for migrants. This month of June, we've been focusing on advice for, for fathers and men because it's Father's Day. So we're celebrating fathers and we are 
focusing on them this month. It's, it's Father's Day on Sunday. And those of you whose fathers are alive, whose fathers are still pre are, are present, whose fathers are there, I hope you're going to spoil them, appreciate them, tell them what they mean to you, and um, celebrate the good. Celebrate the good fathers out there. Celebrate them. Um, it's good to celebrate people when they're still with us. It's good for us to honor them. It's good for us to... Um, amplify their strengths so as we are in in this month of fathers today i'm going to answer the first question that we had um uh, which is um my uh my my wife the, i'm going to read the question if you've got other questions please don't hesitate to put them in the chat my wife moved to the UK in 2017 as a nurse. I joined her with the children and lived with her for two years. I did not get work in the UK in my profession and so decided to go back to Zimbabwe. I left her and the children in the UK and I now want to know how I can spend more time with my children what are my options? So when I look at this question, <laughs> I see so many issues that come up. And last week we talked about a man who was struggling to integrate, who was struggling to work here because he couldn't get into his sector in work. And this week we had a question from a father who decided to go back and now he wants to spend time with his children he misses them and he wants to know what he can do so in order to answer this question um well i had to ask some questions and i've um gathered that the children and the wife now have indefinite leave to remain so as you know, as or you may not know, that where a person migrates to the UK as a skilled worker, this man's wife came here as a nurse in 2017. After five years, she was able to qualify for indefinite leave to remain. So as somebody who has indefinite leave to remain, the children also have indefinite leave to remain with their mother. They've also spent... Um, they spent six years because they, they came a year after mom. So they also were able to get indefinite leave to remain. So the father gave up on the life in the UK. He couldn't get into his sector. It was frustrating him. So he went back home and now wants to know what to do. So, um, he, this father who's who's left if he's because his children have got indefinite leave to remain so if your children have got indefinite leave to remain you can actually apply for your own visa so he can apply for his own visa as the father of british citizen children or children who are settled children who've got indefinite leave to remain because the children have got indefinite leave to remain the father can apply for a visa that allows him to have contact so that visa allows him to parent his children allows him to live here allows him to have a relationship with them and be independent um so he he's not dependent on the mother one of the requirements is that the relationship between the parents needs to have broken down. So the relationship between them has to have broken down and he needs to have access to his children and to show that he's allowed to have the contact with them and he can have it and that he can support himself or he can work and, and survive on his own. So he will need to show that he can look after himself because he has no recourse to public funds, that he has access to the children and he's, if he makes that application, he will be given 30 months leave to remain. And um, after that, he would be um, able to extend if he continues to show that he has a relationship with the children. He's able to support himself. He passed his English and then he can extend for another two and a half years 
after a period of five years, he can now get indefinite leave to remain by himself. So this visa enables him to, to come in and out of the UK as well. Um, if, for example, he doesn't want to settle here, he can be visiting quite frequently, but still maintaining his job abroad. So he can still be able to come in and out, in and out, and the support that they need. So the question that we're answering is from a father who went back to live in Zimbabwe. The wife and the children stayed behind. He now wants to have a relationship with the children. So there is a visa, an application that he can make. He can be able to come, spend time with the children, live here, work here, um, and settle in his own right. If he wants to settle, if he doesn't want to settle, then he will have to keep on renewing. So I remember dealing with a case of a, a father who was from the Congo. Children were here, but he had a very good job in the United Nations. So he would travel frequently every six weeks, come to the UK, spend time with the children, and then go back to work and come back and come back and come back. But because he had uh, enough um, residence in the UK and his absence was based on the work that he was doing, after five years, he was able to now settle. So he was able to get his indefinite leave to remain on the basis of his relationship with the children. So I hope that question is quite clear and straightforward uh, in terms of the options. The other option is to come here on a skilled worker visa um, as a carer or any other sector on your own because that will give you the... Um, the ability to, to to work and settle. So in case you haven't been able to get consent to see the children or your relationship has broken down, the father can also come here on his own visa. Or if him and if the relationship between the mother and the father is still existing, he can always come here on a spouse visa uh, because his wife who's a nurse is now settled. So even though he's gone back to Zimbabwe, he can come back. So those are quite a lot of options uh, for our father who decided to go back. Uh, England hasn't changed, so probably the challenges of getting into the same into the sector may still be the same, or maybe he's gained more qualifications, more experience. So maybe that will be diff different for him in terms of uh, the job situation, which was a problem. So I hope that's answered that question for, for today, uh, the question that we have. I've seen here that we've got another question. Uh, that's, uh, Rumbi, some people are failing to change their driver's license because they need a blue copy. So many people don't have the blue copy. What can we do to change our license? So Maita Simba, thanks for that question. And I think a lot of people are really struggling with that. If you have not been able to change your license because you do not have the blue copy, um, you may need to, to retake your license. You may need to retake your license here and get a, a British license. So you would need to get a provisional and then do another test. That That is an option. But I would also like to see someone who has received the refusal letter from the DVLA. Uh, if there's somebody who has got a, a refusal letter, it may be worth challenging it um, and challenging the reason why they are refusing. What is the rationale? Have the rules changed? Is having that blue copy a requirement of the rules? Or is it, um, it what, what's changed in the policy? It, it would be something that, I would actually like to look into a little bit deeper to try and understand the reasoning for the DVLA on what basis they're making these decisions. Is it backed by the law or is it an arbitrary decision? Is it something that can generally be challenged? Because you know, with every, every sometimes organizations like the DVLA, they might just be responsive to something. They might just decide and change the rules, but it might not be lawful. So I personally, I haven't actually looked into this, but the more questions I'm getting, I'm thinking, okay, perhaps this is something that we look need to look into deeper. 
So if there's anybody who's received a, a written refusal from the DVLA, um, I know there's loads floating around on the groups, but I haven't had one directed to me. Send it to me and let me have a little bit of, um, maybe look at it a little bit deeper to see if it's something that we can challenge. So the obvious answer, the quick, quick answer, if you can't change your license, get a British one. It's quite expensive for the driving lessons, but it's worth it. And it might make your insurance cheaper as well. So if you can get a driver's license here, then go ahead and do that. That might be better. If you can't get that blue copy that they require, if it's impossible for you to get it from Zimbabwe, then you may, it may be best for you to apply for a British license. However, if there is somebody who's received a written refusal, please may you send that to me uh, on info at tulia.org.uk. As many as possible, send them to us so that we can just in research a little bit and look to see if there's anything that is unlawful about their actions. What's ju the justification? Is it an evidential requirement or is it just the DVLA just being reactive to the number of Zimbabwean licenses that they've received in, um, recently? So, yeah, so please um, s send it to me. Uh, the question that was asked about the the licenses, Maita Simba, if you've had one, please send it to me. Uh, the email is info at tulia.org.uk. Let's look into this and see what we can do. That's what I love about the law. You see, you can always challenge it. The the It, it may be something that is unlawful that is happening, that an officer at the DAVLA has decided to do this, but it's not backed up by law. Or it could be lawful. But it's something that we can look into and try and see if we can challenge it legally and on what basis they're doing it and then try and bring about relief for more people. So uh, definitely send those letters through. Let's see what pattern is evolving. Let's see what's happening and then try and see how we can challenge it because I think it can help more people. It's good to know what challenges people are having because, you know, this the new skilled workers who are just coming in to the uk as you've seen by the immigration figures it's a new phenomenon it's not something that has happened before so when so care workers have have not been on the shortage occupation list before it only started in february last year so with that it's a new thing whenever there's something that is new it comes with different challenges so before it was um, like nurses, doctors, accountants. So it was different groups of people who were coming in as skilled workers. But since February 2022, there's been an influx of people who are on a, on, 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 on a different, um, like it, it's a different dynamic. We have small employers taking in large volumes of people from abroad. So with that comes uh, many challenges. And it's still something that is developing. So even with the DVLA, I think they are shocked by the number of applications for licenses coming through. So maybe they're making it up as they go. They're saying, ah, we want this blue thing, we want this, we want this. So we need to check and see. So as we go, I think everyone is learning. Every organization is learning because it's something that is new trying to cope with the numbers, trying to cope with absorb people, trying to get people integrated. It's all an opportunity for learning, an opportunity for growth. But with that comes many, many different challenges. So um, certainly if you've had one of those letters, send them through to us, we'll have a look and then we'll try and see if there's anything that we can do to help. Thank you. Um, there's another question here that says, can someone on a skilled worker visa travel to Zim for a visit? Yes, definitely. You can travel to Zimbabwe on a visit. No one stops you. Um, when you're on annual leave, you can go for your holiday, go for two weeks, go and see your family and come back as long as you can afford it. You can travel not just to Zim, but to any country that you like. You know, if you want to travel in Europe, and you need a visa, you can travel Europe. If you want to travel around the British Isles, want to go to Wales, Scotland, wherever, 
you 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 guys you're blessed you know people who are coming here on the skilled worker visa you are blessed because you're not trapped some people have been you know some people have stayed here for 20 years up to now they don't even have a visa they have never left this country because they cannot so the people who come in on the skilled worker visa you can go on holiday you can do what you know you can travel um as long as you can afford it and you've got annual leave from work you can go on holiday uh, there's absolutely no reason why you cannot unless you just don't want to go yourself right great i've got some more questions here uh thank you for those who are joining if you've got any questions you want to ask please pop them in the chat um if you're on the whatsapp groups you can send them to the to the whatsapp groups um and I can answer them. I'm here for another 10 minutes. Um, there's a question I've had from the WhatsApp group. If you have a visa, why not? Huh, I don't know what this question is. It says, if you have a visa, why not kumbo porta uchi tora ma leave uchi porta uchi wea wea? I'm not sure what that question is. It's come on WhatsApp, so I'm not sure. Uh, there was another question on the Tulia page, which we've answered around the um, number of days um, absence from, from the UK. Um, and it says, I'm a husband who will be joining my wife in the UK on a spouse visa very soon. How long can I stay outside the UK while I have a spouse visa? Um, so I've answered that 480 days and I hope that, um, the answer is, uh, Sarah on the, on the chat. I've answered, we've answered that for you. Uh, Jesse has asked, can I invite my children? I'm on a two and a half year visa, fam visa family route. Um, can I invite my children? I'm on a two and a half year family route. So are you on the 10 year route, Jesse? Or are you on the five-year route to settlement? So there's different rules for different categories. Um, there's different rules for different categories. So it's very important to understand which category you are on. So on the family route, you can be on the five years to settlement, or you can be on the 10 years to settlement on the family route. So that's important to know because that impacts whether you can bring your family or not. If you're on the five-year route, yes, you can bring your children, your dependent children. You can apply for them and bring them. If you're on the 10-year route, there is no automatic right to bring your dependents. However, you can apply and your case will be looked at on human rights grounds. So if you've got underage children, you can make an application, but it won't be... Um, there's no provision within the rules for you directly to bring the children, but you can always apply and plead your case and explain your circumstances and then you can apply for the children. Sometimes when people have been put onto the 10 year route to settlement, what we do when they want to bring their children is we make an application for them under the five year route. We change them from the 10 year route to the five-year route so if it's so an example is somebody has been granted leave to they've been an overstayer in the uk um they've stayed here they've breached their rules they are married to a british citizen and then they have got children so they apply for leave to remain and they're given 30 months so jesse like Two and, two and a half years on the 10 year route. Once you've got leave to remain and you've got a visa, if you meet the requirements of the immigration rules, so if your husband or you are earning over 18,600 a year, if you've passed your English test, if you're in an, an existing relationship, etc., 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 if you've if you've met all the requirements, then we can change your visa and apply for you to go onto the five year route. And then you go onto a spouse visa. 
is guys it's hot you go on to a spouse visa on the five-year route so once you're on now on the five-year route you can now bring in your dependent children it's quicker for you to get settlement rather than 10 years it's now a little bit less so that is an option again that you have and that is an option that we uh, often advise people to do so that you can benefit from the 10 year route is like discretionary and the five year route is under the immigration rules. So Jesse, it might be worth just seeking advice about your situation so that we can try and see how we can help you. Oh, try. Um, try to apply for them now jesse or if you're just about to get indefinite leave and they they're like young children wait until you've got indefinite leave to remain because when you apply for them when you have indefinite leave to remain your children will also get indefinite leave to remain so it's better for you to wait that that year if you've just got a year get your indefinite leave and then apply but if for example maybe they're about to turn 18 or something has happened if you can wait wait because it will be cheaper for you i'm sorry for your loss um of your mother and hope that um, you have something in place for them to be looked after during that time so i would definitely say if you're just about to get indefinite leave wait um and then prepare everything because it's also in a very expensive application and then make the application once you've got yeah your indefinite leave to remain so if the older one is 12 that's okay yeah, all the best with that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would definitely say wait. Pauline has asked if you can apply for a child who's over 18, who's living in Zimbabwe and who's suffering from mental health. You can. So you can apply as long as you've got evidence to back up what you're saying, at least as long as you've got evidence, as long as you have, um, like, your medical reports, you can show that child cannot live alone they're struggling even with their day-to-day -day care even personal care uh, and you can back up everything that you're saying with evidence then definitely you can apply for a child living in zimbabwe who's suffering from mental health so but you can apply put your evidence the outcome is up to the home office so for everyone you can always apply but you can argue your case so you're starting from a place where a child who's over 18 they're saying that child is is an adult so it's it's for you and your legal reps to argue your case so definitely you can apply however the result is up to the home office and you just have to make sure that you have a lot of evidence and you're able to put through your case that's awesome so thank you hannah i hope you've got the whatsapp group to join it is very helpful especially for people who are switching um next month we are answering questions that have to do so we've still got more this june we're answering male related questions as a start and then answering any other questions but next month we're doing a series on marriage because for those who follow me on social media, you may see that we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary, our silver wedding anniversary, a couple of weeks ago. And so we're going to be doing content around marriage, around visas and marriage, around um, <clears throat> relationship breakdown, around how to how to, to to navigate a marriage in the diaspora you know marriage is in the diaspora a lot of people say they are under attack uh because of the challenges that are there you know there, there's unique challenges to the diaspora marriage setup so many so we're going to be talking about that we're going to share some of our experiences i think i'll be able to convince my husband to share a little bit he doesn't like talking uh, I'm the one who likes talking. He doesn't like it, but maybe I might be able to convince him. Uh, and we're starting off next week. We're going to join uh, further together on the platform on Thursday evening. We'll share the flyer so that you can come and join us. And we'll be sharing a little bit about our marriage journey. Um, we thank God for grace because 25 years, it hasn't been easy. 
it's been difficult, especially when we came first came here. Um, it was very difficult, but we thank God. So if you've got questions around marriage, please send them through to us at marketing at tulia.org.uk. If there's topics that you want us to discuss, if there's anything that you want to discuss around marriage, relationships, immigration, um, diaspora relationships, please send in your questions and the whole of July is um, around those questions. Um, so that is, um, that is wonderful. So please, Thursday evening, I think it'll be around nine. So, uh, but I will definitely post the flyer. If you just look out on my wall and you'll see, you'll see that. Thank you, Jesse. We are indeed blessed. You know, the, the 25 years, the first few years, they were, yeah, difficult. Um, and it's not easy here in, in uh, I don't know, it's probably not easy anywhere, but um, I found that it made it more difficult being isolated, being taken out of the village, being taken away from family support and uh, living in the diaspora. So yeah, it's been, it's been challenging and we, we are grateful. I think it's just the grace of God. You know, you, you don't have to take credit for things because you, you can be blessed. Pauline, I hope you've seen the link at the bottom of how you can get in touch with us. You can go via our website. You can book an appointment. We've got various appointments there. And one thing I just want to explain is that we are a small team. We're a small organization and we do what we can. So we're not able to respond immediately to every person. We try our best and so we have a booking system we've got slots there that are booked on tuesdays you can book a free slot and i'm glad to say that we now have opened up i think we've opened up or we are opening up soon slots on a thursday so that you can be able to get um advice uh on a thursday so you can come in and join um and just book a slot to get some advice you can send us an email uh we've got paid for services if you need quicker advice they're there as well so we have different options for you we're unable to respond instantly to messengers uh, or even to whatsapp messages we cannot cope with the demand so we have to look after ourselves as a team look after our mental health look after ourselves as well as much as we want to serve we also need to look after ourselves. So that's why we've got a website where you can go on, you can book, that's the process. Um, and sometimes you have to wait because we, we have a backlog. So, um, but there's many options for you in terms of legal advice or help. So if we can't get to you as quickly as you need, um, there are options, but I do know that um, the sector is overwhelmed in terms of there's a lot of work uh, around and so we may not be able to get to you instantly and that's why we do these Fridays where we we are able to answer some of your questions instantly but after the after the the, the live if you're trying to text um, you may not get um, responses you will sign post you to our website so please utilize our website Go onto our YouTube channel. We've answered a lot of questions on there. There is so much content. So if you take the time to just go through it, you will most probably ask, find the answer to the question that you are looking for. So have a good day, everyone. Have a really wonderful weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. It doesn't last forever for those who are in England. And I believe the weather report says we're going to have a storm coming our way. So make the most of it. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. Thank you so much and be blessed and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much for joining.